How to use Bazel with Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.375.2. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has Bazel 6 installed on it. There's also a sample repository for this video. The link to that repository is down in the description. Now you'll notice that I said that I have Bazel 6 installed. Since I'm installing Bazel on a Linux-based agent, when I looked within the package manager, the latest version was around 4. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to install the latest version of Bazel, which at this point is 6. So I went out to Bazel build slash Bazel, and I looked at the releases. I saw that 6 was the latest at the time of recording, and then I downloaded the binary for Bazel 6. I installed that on the agent, but Bazel needs more than just the Bazel binary in order to run. One of the other items that Bazel needs is GCC. So I installed that through the package manager. And finally, the sample project that we're running is based on Java. And for Bazel, I have to install Java 11 specifically for that. Now this sample repository is based on the Bazel tutorial. And if you were to go into the Bazel tutorial, it walks you through the process that I just explained. You have to install Bazel, which we installed Bazel 6. We have to install the JDK. Preferred version is 11, but you can do anywhere between 8 and 15, but we chose 11. We got all of that set up, and then we went into the sample project. So my sample repository is based on the Java tutorial section from Bazel build examples. When we take a look at that sample repository, we have workspace, build, and then our actual source code that's going to be compiled and used by Bazel. So let's go back over to the Bazel tutorial here. The build file is where all of the magic happens. Now, since this is a Java project, you might be used to seeing a POM XML for Maven or a build.gradle for using Gradle, but here we're going to be using Bazel to build this project. So all we really need in this case, since we're using Bazel, is we just need the build file. We load in some rules, and then we're calling Java binary. We're giving it a name, and then we're telling it where the source files live. And we're saying, okay, go look for everything in source main Java, com example, star.java. Let's go take a look at our Jenkins file. Within our Jenkins file, we're going to first verify that Bazel is installed. And we'll also, since we're outputting the version value, we should be able to confirm that it's Bazel version 6. We're going to build the project. And this build directive is documented within the Bazel documentation. And then finally, we're going to review the dependency graph. Now, in the example here for Bazel tutorial, it gets down into the section, review the dependency graph. And if you were to take the text that's output from that and run it through GraphViz, you're going to receive an image that looks something like this. Now, in my example, we're not going to be running GraphViz, but we are going to take a look at the output of what we get from Bazel query. So if we take one last look at our Jenkins file, Bazel version, Bazel build specifying project runner, and then finally, Bazel query with its arguments. So let's go back into our controller. We already have a job set up that is pointing at that Jenkins file. So let's go ahead and click on build now, and then we will go ahead and review the console output. As it starts up, we can see the Bazel version says starting local Bazel server. It gives us a build label of 600. That's the one that we downloaded from GitHub directly and installed. We run our Bazel build project runner. We take a look at all of the outputs that are being created here. We see that we successfully built the project. And then when we run the Bazel query, we get the text of my graph and then the text that follows along with that. In this next section of the tutorial, it talks about refining your Bazel build. And what this gives us is we can split the sample project into two targets. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace what we have in our build file with these values for Java binary and Java library. What we can see here is Java binary depends on greeter. Now this greeter is the name of Java library. So what's going to happen is when this starts up, we're going to first build the greeter library and then the Java binary section we'll go ahead and build. So let's go ahead and copy this. Let's go ahead and go back over into our project. Let's modify our build file. We'll edit right here in line. Let's change this Java binary and let's replace this with what we just copied from the tutorial. So we now see greeter is here and then we see the call out to Greeter for Java library. Let's go ahead and save this. Now our build file is saved in the repository. If we take a look back at the tutorial, we can see that Bazel build still stays project runner, so we don't need to modify anything for our Jenkins file. So let's take a look one more time before we actually go and run the job. We can see here that our 
output from Bazel query is project runner and then two extra lines here. We have a project runner pointing at source main Java, and then we also have a source main Java second line here. So basically within node, we have three lines, project runner, project runner pointing at something else, and then source main Java, three lines. Keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and go back into our job. Let's run it one more time. Let's go ahead and click into console output. Again, verifying our Bazel version. We are running the build for project runner, and then we go into running our query. Now, if you take a look right now at the output for Bazel query, instead of just seeing three like we did in build one, within build two, we see a completely different version of this. And if we go back into our Bazel tutorial, the representation of text that we just saw is now what we see here. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.